everybody, I'm Jonathan Randall, and welcome to another episode of How You Like Me Now. This is episode 29. I want to thank everybody who's been tuning in. I really appreciate your support. If you want to show me more support, you can do so on my Kofi page. I will put the link to that in the description. It would mean a lot to me if you showed me some support on that page. Uh, it's not easy for me to ask for support on the Kofi page, but I've been getting less and less acting and comedy gigs the more and more I talk about Palestinian human rights. And I could use the support so I can continue making the content that I want to make that you want to listen to. So check that link out. It is in the description. And I hope you guys will show me some support on my Kofi page. Uh, hope everybody's doing well. Summer is kicked off. I hope everybody's enjoying it so far. I will be doing another comedy show, Save the Garden, at the Elizabeth Street Garden on the 29th of June. It's a free show. Uh, I, I hope people will donate money to the garden because we're trying to save it. Everyone's welcome to come on out for a night of comedy. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to have a super great lineup, and I hope you guys will come out and have a fun night with me. Again, that's June 29th, Elizabeth Street Garden, Save the Garden, a comedy show. So last week I was telling you guys about this girl I went out with and she lied to me about her age. So then I told her, you know, hey, listen, I don't think this is gonna work out. I can't be with someone who like started a relationship deceiving me. I'm like, maybe we could have like a friends with benefits situation. She was like, yeah, let's have a friends with benefits situation. I was like, okay. But then she's like, let's meet up later. I was like, oh, yeah, we'll meet up later. Then she sent me like some insane text. I don't, I don't even know what it was. It was just like her like vomiting up like thoughts in her heads or feelings. And it, it was like, this girl has like something wrong with her. And I was like, listen, I don't think it's a good idea that we actually meet up later today. Why don't we take some time? We had a very intimate weekend and maybe we, we need a little space to like you know, figure out like how we feel before we move forward if we're gonna actually, you know, be friends with benefits. She was like, okay. And then she kept sending me like these like kind of insane texts where like, I don't know what she's talking about. I don't know why she wanted to share these things with me, especially after I told her that I wasn't interested in like a real relationship. And the only thing maybe we could have is like a friends with benefits situation. But she kept sending me crazy or texts. And after a couple, I was like, listen, I don't think it's a good idea that we see each other. Take care. I thought that would be the end of it, but it wasn't because then a couple days later, she's texting me again and being like, oh no, we should still, you know, have a friends with benefits situation. I think we'd both like it. It would both be fun. And like just sending me stuff that like, I don't want to hear. Like, I don't know why this woman is telling me this. Like we only went out a couple times. We didn't have a relationship. We're not like super close, but she's like, I don't even know what's going on, uh, but I was like, and then I text her and she's like, let's meet up and talk. And I was like, no, I don't want to meet up and talk to you. Please respect that. Best wishes. Take care. I was hoping that would be the end of it, but no, she didn't respect my wishes. She still continued to text me and I had to be like, stop texting me. Please don't text me again. I actually considered blocking this woman. I'm not a big blocker. I don't typically block people. I think maybe I blocked one person in my whole life. But like, I was about to block this girl. If she texts me ever again, I am definitely gonna block her. I mean, that's insane. Like if someone lets you know, like they're not interested in you, like don't like try to like tell them everything that's going through your head and like what you, every feeling that you have, like if you only went out a couple times and like, just like, like take a hint and take some space, you know? Like I would have maybe like seen that girl like on a just a, you know, sexual basis. Part of the reason why I chose not to was because from all her texts, I thought that she was a little unhinged. And I'm like, this is a woman that's gonna end up getting hurt and just having this kind of relationship with somebody. And I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I did it more to protect her. I'd love to have like a fuck buddy that I could call up whenever I want and they'll come over and we'll get down, you know? Uh, but like, I also like care about consideration for others. And also like, I'm not trying to hurt anybody. So I didn't want to do that. And I realized like through the messages that this woman was sending me that like she would Get, get like emotionally invested really fast and like I wasn't like trying to like end up hurting this girl because I knew there was no way I would be involved with someone that lied to me for two dates and only came clean on the third date like when we got wasted you know um but she didn't respect my wishes. She's just kept texting me and texting me. So thankfully she stopped. Uh, I was like, if she texts me one more time, I'm gonna block her. But like, geez, ladies, like, don't do that. Like, if a guy like takes a step back, like, 
honor that. Don't like take two steps forward and get in his face when he does that. It's not going to work out for you. And what you want to happen definitely won't happen if you can't have respect for your partner or for the other person. Anyways, talking about women, um, I keep seeing this video on social media where these women are, you know, like pantomiming, lip singing this song, doing a little skit to the song as they do. I never heard the song before I started seeing this video, but it, I guess it's like, it goes like, give me one margarita and I'll open my lips. Give me two margaritas and I'll put it in my piss. Give me three margaritas and I'll put it in my tush. I don't know. Something about that. I'm like, what is this song? This, uh, the steps to date rape? That's what it sounds like. I'm like, why are women like acting out this song? Why are young girls picking this song? There's so many great songs out there. There's so much amazing music. And of all the music, they decide to pick this disgusting song, which I think it like, I don't get it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too old, but it's just like, this is crazy. Like these are the things that like, it, it sounds like when women get taken advantage of because they drink so much. And like, why is there a song now like glorifying that and encouraging young women to do that? Like, oh, get drunk and have sex. Like nothing bad ever happened from that before. That doesn't sound like a recipe for disaster. I mean, you know how many abortions started with like getting drunk and having sex or you know how many people like felt violent violated or felt abused in some way because they made poor decisions when they got drunk or they were taken advantage of when they got drunk. So this is crazy that this is what women want to, they, they want to do. This is what they, they want to mimic. This is like who they want to be, a woman singing these songs and doing that. I, I think it's really horrible. It's really disgusting. I feel so bad for young girls that this is how impressionable they are where they hear something like that or they see people making videos like this and like, this is cool. We want to do that too and show the whole world and everybody we know a slip singing that if you get us drunk, we'll put it in our ass. Like, what the fuck is wrong with the youth today? All right. Uh, let's see. Other things I want to complain about because there's always a lot. Um, this new bagel store that opened up in New York City. Uh, it's called Papa Bagels. And I just want to say Fuck them, okay? Because they have this thing where like, you can't just buy one bagel and they don't sell sandwiches. Oh my God, they're trying to reinvent the bagel where you have to buy three bagels and then you have to like dip it in the cream sauce, uh, the cream cheese, that's their deal. So the, the smallest order you can make is three bagels and then they, they won't make it a sandwich for you. They'll just give you the bagels and then you're supposed to dip it in their cream cheese. And I guess it comes with cream cheese for like $12. That's the minimum order. So like you have to like be a little bit fat to even go there or you can't be single. You can't just be a single one person going there unless you have some sort of eating disorder and you really want to load up on carbs one day. But I don't like that. Don't dictate to people like how much of your food they have to eat or how they eat it. Like, I don't care. Who do you think you are? It's just a bagel, all right? You should be able to buy one bagel from a store and not have to buy three of them. If you don't want to make sandwiches, that's fine. But just be like, okay, you could just buy one bagel. like. That's that's cool. Now, like, you have to buy three bagels and you have to buy our cream cheese and it costs this much and we're going to overcharge you for all of it. And we're a new, hip, cool bagel place and we play by our own rules and fuck you. Um, anyways, now to talk about something that I discovered that I, I can't believe I've been, like, sleeping on it all this time and I'm going to share it with everybody. That's right. I'm not gatekeeping. I want to help all my listeners. I like going to the movies, especially I typically go on movies on Tuesdays. That's when the prices are like between five and seven dollars, depending on which theater chain you go to. So I love going to the movies on Tuesdays. Uh, but whenever I go to movies, one thing that often sometimes deter often sometimes that doesn't really make sense. It often sometimes sometimes often. No, it often discourages me from going to the movies if like the seats I like aren't available. Like I want to sit smack dab in the middle of the theater. That is my seat. And if there aren't seats around that area, typically I'm like, all right, Right, screw it, I'm not gonna go to the movie or I'm gonna go to a different showing. Like, I will revolve it mostly around like when I could get the seat I want. Well, I want to go see a movie the other day. I couldn't get the seat I want, but then I noticed the handicapped seats. Oh my gosh, like there usually aren't handicapped people there. There are special handicapped seats and these are the best seats in the house because typically there's like a seats of two and then there's spaces on each side for like handicapped people. So like there aren't annoying people sitting next to you. I went to go see Guardians of the Galaxy 3. There was a guy sitting next to me clearing his throat the whole fucking movie. Every 30 seconds of the movie, the guy was like, <coughs> it was like, I was like, this is so annoying. I'm not trying to listen to you. All right, I'm trying to watch this 
beautiful movie about Rocket Raccoon and you're ruining it for me with your goddamn throat fucking <clears throat> clearing every five seconds is really annoying. But then when I'm in the, the handicap seat, there's no one sitting next to you because that's where like someone with the wheelchair would be. And like, that's the seat for, you know, they're like the person accompanying the person with the wheelchair. But typically I go to the movies, there aren't any wheelchair people, handicapped people, and those seats are just empty. But if you ask for those seats and there aren't like wheelchair people, they will let you have those seats. And those are awesome seats. So everybody, if you're worried about getting good seats in the theater, if you haven't bought th seats in advance, which you do now, and you show up to the theater and it's all packed, Go to the uh, the wheelchair seats, ask for the wheelchair seats, and uh, you can thank me later. No problem. Just trying to help out and give back. Okay, where are we now? Um, I, you know, I didn't know for a while what to talk about on this week's episode. I know I've already talked about so much. Maybe I'm talking too fast. I do that a lot. I know I gotta slow it down. I was gonna just do like a stream of consciousness episode where just like say whatever comes to my mind. Uh, but then I ended up, you know, doing some research and there were some things I wanted to talk about. But a stream of consciousness episode may come soon. So be on the lookout for that, everybody. Um, Let's talk about Israel and Palestine. I, it's, it's, it's become such a big part of my life. It's a passion for me. Uh, Palestinian human rights, I really care about it. Uh, you know, there is a lot of comments on my content that I do not like and I do not care for them. They're so, like, filled with hate. They, there are often anti-Semitic comments, which, like, I don't appreciate. Like, if you appreciate my content and you want me to continue making content and speaking out on behalf of uh, Palestinian human rights and trying to spread awareness, don't be commenting anti-Semitic crap on my page, all right? Don't be threatening other people. I am after a peaceful coexistence. That's what I care about, all right? So I'm happy to strike up conversations in the comments and that maybe people will learn from one another, but if someone not just like be calling people's names and wishing people death or making threats, like don't do that. That makes me not want to like make content about uh, what's happening to the Palestinians because like I'm not trying to like, you know, uh, I'm not trying to like stoke the, the fire of hatred. I'm trying to spread awareness so there could be peace, so there could be a better future, not just to continue the hatred that's been going on forever. Anyways, I'm going to talk a little bit more about hate at the end of the podcast, but unfortunately I need to talk about uh, a child's death, you know, which is one of the reasons why I speak out against Israel, one of the reasons why I speak out for Palestinian human rights, because it's crazy that uh, Israel keeps killing Palestinian children and getting away with it, and people want to make excuses for it, and it's inexcusable. So last week, a two-year-old Palestinian was shot in the head, and unfortunately, he died this week. Um, him and his father were in the West Bank. They were getting ready to go uh, somewhere, I guess visiting their family from what I understand. They left their house, they got into the car, and according to eyewitnesses, as soon as they started driving away, bam, bam, uh, Israeli forces shot them. They wounded both of them. Um, and unfortunately, the two-year-old son has died. Um, so Israel claims that shots were fired at a nearby settlement, so then they were like shooting back uh, from that, even though eyewitnesses are saying they didn't hear any gunshots, that they just saw this, the father and the son in the car and they started driving away and that's when there were shots and they were shot. Um, but this is absolutely sad and horrible and crazy that this two-year-old is dead and... Um, I want to mention that the settlement that Israel claims, you know, w was being protected because somebody was shooting at it is an illegal settlement and that most of the international community considers it a violation of the Gen Fourth Geneva Convention and that it is in the way of peace and that it is an illegal settlement. Um, according to the Israeli organization uh, Peace Now, which is an Israeli-based organization. And this is information based on data from, Israeli, from an Israeli civil administration. 34.35% of the land where this illegal settlement is on belongs to Palestinians. It's privately owned Palestinian land. Anyways, uh, this illegal settlement has been there for many years. Um, of course, uh, 
I don't understand why this settlement is more important than the life of a two-year-old child. That makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, anyways, it's an illegal settlement. It shouldn't be there. Uh, it's on uh, like a, 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 a over a, a third of it is Palestinian land. And this is crazy. So no matter which way you look of it, this settlement is causing problems. Whether it's because uh, there are Palestinian gunmen, which is a typical just like propaganda from Israel of why they get away with killing people and why they do what they do. So I don't even know if that is true, but it wouldn't be true no matter what. If there was an illegal settlement there, then like whether Palestinians were shooting at it or not, they wouldn't be if the illegal settlement wouldn't be there. And this two-year-old child wouldn't be dead if it wouldn't be there either. So all these settlements, they got to go. Uh, that's what I think. And I think it's unfortunate that they are still there. Okay. So, so far this year, at least 26 Palestinian children have been killed by Israeli forces, okay? So I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, they're, they're terrorists. Like, no, they're children. 26 children. I mean, there's been like over like 120 Palestinian deaths this year, but 26 of them have been kids. And that's not bueno. No bueno. That's not kosher. That's not in line with the values of Judaism. It's not a good look for Israel. It's not a good look for Jews. It's not a good look for humanity. All right? A two-year-old child shouldn't die. 26 kids shouldn't be killed. All right? Period. Um, you know, and I, I say all this. I say all this. I spread this information. Uh, I know I'm passionate about it. Uh, uh, I, I am upset about it. I, I do have anger. Um, I try not to have hatred, though, because hatred, uh, it only hurts you. It doesn't hurt the other person. Hatred hurts you. And I see so much ugliness and so much hatred from a lot of people that, I guess, comment on my videos, a, a lot of people that follow me. And I really wish they wouldn't live their lives or they wouldn't be filled with such hate because that hatred does not serve them. And you know what? Israel wants, wants Palestinians. They want Arabs to hate them. They want that. They want to fuel that hatred so they can keep pushing their Zionist propaganda. They can keep pushing their narrative that, you know, oh, well, uh, they want to wipe us off from the face of the earth, so we're just trying to protect ourselves. Could you imagine how would Israel be able to respond to killing children, to forced displacement, if they couldn't, like, just say back, oh, well, look, look at what they say. They want to wipe us off from the face the, uh, the earth. They hate us all so much. Oh, you know, if Israel puts down their weapons, then there's be no Israel. If Palestine puts down their weapons, then, you know, there would be peace. But if Israel puts down their weapons, like, yeah, well, if there wasn't such hatred, they wouldn't be able to say that. They wouldn't be able to do and get away with some of the things they do, but they just lean back and be like, oh, look, they hate us so much. They want to kill us. Look at what they're saying. Look at the comments. Look at this. Look at that. All right. The hatred, it, it, it really, it just eats people up inside. It's not good. In fact, one of the biggest personality traits for people that have high blood pressure is resentment. So like, don't hold resentment in your heart. Don't be filled with hatred. You just got to like, let it go. All right. This is a quote from Shakespeare that I really love. And I think it's so true. And it's heat, not a furnace for your foe so hot that it do singe yourself. I mean, I think that kind of sums it up. If you're not following me on social media, please do at Jonathan Randall across social media. Uh, I'm doing a show at the Garden, like I mentioned, June 29th, Elizabeth Street Garden. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. I'm Jonathan Randall. How you like me now?